Patrick Chovanek, economic advisor at Silvercrest Asset Management and a longtime China watcher. I almost thought it said a longtime CNBC watcher. <laughs> CNBC Seema Modi is here as well. <laughs> it's great to have you guys both. All right, so Patrick, let's start with is China's reopening a help or a hindrance to the global economy right now? What are you seeing? So right now what we're seeing in markets is a bit of volatility as people try to assess what this kind of, what, what this, um, I'm sorry, I'm hearing an echo, um, what this uh, uh, new wave of COVID and the impact that it's going to have uh, and how disruptive it's going to be to China's economy. Right. The, the, um, I'm, I'm really hearing a very bad echo. I'm sorry. No problem. We'll get, we'll get you sorted out. Seema and I can chat with each other here for a moment because, Seema, the reason I asked the question is we started with a very positive narrative. Hey, China's reopening. This yeah. is going to boost commodity prices. This is going to boost global GDP. This is going to bail out the travel sector. Like, all of these things. Then today we go, wait a minute. Do, are we going to see COVID cases now rise globally and kind of backtrack a lot of that progress? And countries are already responding. Japan's uh, Prime Minister Kishida is saying that there are great uh, concerns around the transparency of data coming out of China. So they are now requiring Chinese travelers to present a negative COVID test upon arrival. Malaysia, Taiwan, considering options. The U.S., uh, according to NBC News, is weighing options as well. Should there be COVID restrictions on, on Chinese travelers? Now, what's interesting is yesterday we were talking about that significant development as part of this China reopening, which is that quarantine requirement being removed. And there was questions as to whether the Chinese traveler was ready. Well, let me tell you, they are ready. We just got <laughs> new data from Trip.com. That's basically the Expedia of China reporting that there is a, they saw a 254% jump in outbound flight bookings from China wow. yesterday compared to the day prior. So the yesterday. appetite to travel is there. Now the question is, how will countries respond, given that this is all happening as COVID cases continue to rise across the country? Exactly. What's the worst case scenario for the travel industry, do you think? Worst case scenario is we start to see uh, different countries respond with different rules around COVID and restrictions that don't really line up. Whenever there's confusion, that will weigh on travel, travel sentiment. And I think that could certainly be an issue. I mean, as in COVID cases rising in other parts of the country because of China, uh, I mean, now we have vaccination rates. That's a very different story. Uh, this year compared to what we saw back in 2020. We can hope, and again, looking at shares of things like Norwegian, uh, the cruise lines, I mean, they're, they're under pressure today. It's a tough tape to really tell which factor exactly is weighing on them. But uh, Patrick, ho hopefully you can hear me okay now. I guess the larger question for people, again, is whether this event is a net positive for global GDP or whether it will raise risks all over again about the spread of COVID. So there's a lot of optimism right now among the business community uh, among investors about what reopening could mean for China. Um, you know, for a long time now, for two plus years, China has been essentially closed um, to travel. It, it, it hasn't been impossible to go there, but it's been very, very difficult. Um, and there, people are feeling very positive about what the impact is. However, we take a step back and we look at the bigger picture. You know, the protests have gone away, but there is this underlying unease within China. Um, about the direction that China's leadership, namely Xi Jinping, is taking the country. Hmm. And that has some serious grounds to it and is not going to go away. Are you talking about the unrest that we've seen in a lot of the factories, for instance, and those kind, it, sort of when they hold up the white pieces of paper, things like that? What does that all tell you? Yes, and it speaks of a broader concern. You know, I, you mentioned uh, something that I said uh, before I came on, which is that China's decision making is top down and reactive. Um, and that has a broader concern, whether it goes, whether it's applied to Taiwan, whether it's applied to the international role of the renminbi, trade tensions or technology tensions with the United States. You know, there's a lot of people, a lot of investors sort of reassured themselves that with this phrase that China has a hundred year plan and the implication being that Chinese policymakers always know exactly what they're doing. Right. You know, China doesn't even have a hundred day plan to deal with COVID. Hmm. And I think that's emblematic of the fact that, that Chinese policymakers can make mistakes just like anywhere else in the world. And I think investors need to digest that and the implications on a broader scale than just what's happening right now with COVID. And final, the, then what do you think the implications might be? Because to me, if you say there really is no plan, that suggests they could change their minds, right? What if we all go ahead with this, this big idea that it, you know, it's, a, it's a different world now, and then they go, you know what, never mind, no, we're not so fast. Well, they did do a 180-degree turn from you know, COVID zero to complete reopening, which 
it was kind of odd. Uh, I don't. I think they're committed to this path right now, um, and I don't think, quite frankly, there is any going back to COVID zero. Um, but uh, but that said, you know, the broader issue really is the direction that Xi Jinping has been taking China, which is not in the direction of economic reform. It's been in the direction of greater tensions, and I think we'll continue to see tensions with the United States and the West, and a more top-down decision-making, uh, state-directed Chinese economy. And that creates very serious problems for investors.